Okay, thank you all for being here. Um, today we're going to discuss the proposal of a new um, And while this is specifically directed to Susan Doe's, I welcome your attendance, and it will, I think it will help us quite a bit in the future, improve the models and understand how they're run, how they're used in the field. Um, and Jeff will start us off. <laughs> Yeah, good, good morning to uh, everyone on the line, and, and thank you for, uh, for joining us uh, uh, today. Um, based on uh, uh, meeting with uh, NOAA, National Weather Service Management, based on the feedback from the field, uh, especially at our uh, uh, December product suite reviews, we've, we've realized that we really need a more integrated uh, science uh, and, and technology uh, approach. Um, we... Uh, for a long time, the modelers have kind of done done their thing, and the forecasters have done their thing, and we really need to to bring uh, everyone together more to, uh, to to work on the process going forward. We EMC wants to work with the SUs and the DOES uh, with the ultimate goal here of improving forecast systems. It, it's been made pretty clear that uh, uh, we we really need to all uh, work together to. Uh, help us understand your needs and to help uh, you understand what we're doing. And uh, that's what our goal today is, to uh, kind of uh, spell out uh, how we want to uh, move towards that goal. Uh, for, some, for, the, for those dialing in today, some of you I'm sure are familiar with our uh, model evaluation group. Some may not be. Uh, we started it uh, three years ago with uh, uh, Glenn and I, uh, uh, basically doing weekly uh, briefings of model of performance on the synoptic scale, the mesoscale, and statistics. Um, we uh, brought in uh, Corey Guastini uh, within the last uh, year to uh, provide uh, a, a much-needed uh, third person, and uh, he has become a, a great uh, contributor. Um, what we do is our, our goal is to look at the, uh, uh, the model performance uh, uh, again, on, on a uh, forecast map uh, kind of uh, platform, and instead of just looking at uh, a, a, an aggregation of statistics over the long haul, we look at the day-to-day -day weather maps and, and get a feel for what's going on um, and, and kind of understand what forecasting issues are. We have become a, a, a place to evaluate EMC parallels and experiments and share some of those results with you. Uh, we give critical feedback, or the MEG has provided critical feedback to the uh, people who work on the models and aren't able to look at them day to day. We uh, have given our users uh, updates uh, on model changes and significant issues in the model, and we've listened to your feedback. And we've been able to rapidly generate uh, critical case studies, uh, such as the uh, right after, within a month after we formed, we had a look at the uh, Mid-Atlantic derecho. 2012, uh, the uh, Oklahoma City uh, uh, flooding El Reno tornado event. We uh, did a big recap of the uh, Philadelphia, New York City uh, snow bust of this past winter, Superstorm, Stan Superstorm Sandy. Um, we, uh, we started out as mostly uh, an internal uh, meeting, but we've uh, gradually uh, started expanding to uh, uh, include more people. And we've, uh, within the last uh, six months or so, we've really started advertising these meetings to the field, uh, giving uh, advance notice of the topics we're going to cover, and, and our audience has really uh, uh, increased, and uh, we've uh, had some really huge crowds uh, following some of the major. Just uh, some examples of the kind of stuff uh, we, we show here with um, uh, some of our recaps, and we looked at the uh, uh, Philadelphia uh, a New Jersey uh, surprise icing event this past January. An example up here, how we looked at model trends to see uh, the freezing surface freezing line here in black, how there was uh, a trend with newer forecasts in the lower right corner to uh, have some precip on the uh, cold side of the uh, surface freezing line, uh, whereas the GFS uh, was running warm. We're not, uh, and then uh, and we looked at the New York City snow over forecast, breaking down every model's uh, uh, precipitation forecast over multiple days and uh, trying to figure out uh, why some of the runs uh, were not bringing heavy precip too far to the west. The goal of the MEG is to uh, enhance communication, again, uh, uh, within EMC, among the branches and the working groups, 
uh, and also between EMC and the outside user, users, including the NCEP centers, the WFOs. Uh, we've gotten uh, some participation uh, from uh, some of our customers. Uh, various uh, NCEP centers have uh, given uh, uh, presentations. Some of the local uh, uh, WFOs have, ESRO. And these are really critical for giving EMC a, a perspective of uh, of modeling issues uh, that we may not be aware of, just don't have the uh, experience and the perspective of the local uh, offices to do that. Uh, the MEG has been successful in that uh, there are already uh, several instances of uh, issues that were identified in the MEG uh, that were presented to the uh, uh, developers here, and they were able to uh, quickly uh, work on changes and fixes that have already been implemented. As an example, right when we uh, started the MEG in 2012, uh, the MEG, we noticed a uh, late afternoon a moist uh, cool bias in the GFS, especially over the Midwest, uh, and uh, especially in the hot air masses, we're running really cool and very moist. And uh, by the t we actually noticed it before the forecasters did, and by the time we started getting the complaints uh, from the field, uh, our uh, developers were already working on a fix. You can see an example here on the left or something we had presented, you know, forecast soundings here, the observed solid dashed uh, as the model, uh, showing a short-range GFS forecast of a uh, very cool and moist uh, boundary layer. And then uh, we uh, had the uh, Global Modeling Group work on a fix, and uh, this was an example of the uh, improvement. And again, this was uh, you know, discovered in the MEG in May of 2012, I think by August or September, uh, we had a fix into operation. So we've been able to uh, identify and, and help respond to a, a number of uh, model issues in our uh, first three years. But we really feel like the MEG uh, needs to expand. Uh, we, we, we've, we're, we're proud of what we've accomplished, but we know there's just so much more that we can do. Uh, our uh, evaluation <coughs> of the operational and, and new models uh, we can do so much more on that. We, we've we've kind of had to be focused on the CONUS uh, just because it's three of us kind of holding down the fort. We uh, There's so much to look at on the global scale. We need to look more at uh, how uh, observations are assimilated. Uh, we want to have more interaction with users. Again, we, uh, we thank uh, Southern Region for uh, helping us uh, set up this uh, uh, weekly WebEx uh, uh, forum every week. We, we really want to work uh, with our users more. They, uh, I, uh, we've heard that you want to know more about what our models do and, and, and the process of how changes are made. We want to know, you know what you are seeing from the models and what you need from them, and this is the forum to do that. And one thing that's been made uh, very, very clear to all of EMC is that our, uh, our, our statistics right now are kind of uh, scattered uh, all over various websites. And uh, one of our longer range goals here is to uh, create a uh, kind of a one-stop shopping for stats, a, uh, a big, full, and, and open, and especially user-friendly uh, database of uh, model statistics. Uh, part of our expansion, uh, we, we want to uh, develop these joint projects with the SUs uh, and the DOES, and, and meeting with uh, uh, NWS management has decided that this might be a, a really good starting point for uh, uh, expanding the MEG and having the MEG kind of become the uh, center point for uh, uh, model changes and communicating them to the field. We want to have one team that uh, works uh, to uh, evaluate and uh, figure out a, a, a long-term plan going forward for uh, the convection permitting ensemble. Uh, another team to work with the uh, GFS, another just to work on uh, communications and uh, dissemination of, of all the work that will be done. And we want to set up a, a visitor's program uh, between EMC and the rest of the uh, National Weather Service, a, a, a two-way plan, and Glenn will say a little bit more about this, where visitors come here to uh, help us evaluate uh, parallels and operational models and uh, get a feel for what we're doing and, and tell us uh, what you're seeing and what you need from us. And, and we want to uh, go to the field uh, as well and uh, 
see how you use the models and, and what your needs are. And again, the idea here is that the MEG is going to become the focal point of, uh, of all of this activity. And uh, kind of a, just a very uh, broad plan on, on what the uh, uh, group that looks at the convection permitting ensemble will do. Uh, we'll look at the uh, current uh, high resolution uh, mod mesoscale models that uh, permit convection. Uh, and then we'll evaluate experimental versions. And, and, and a big thing is that you know, we're, we're headed here in the next couple of years towards um, high resolution, rapidly updating ensembles. Instead of these <coughs> deterministic uh, runs, uh, we're going to be moving towards an ensemble framework and exactly how we configure that and what kind of products are made is going to be a big effort that uh, we, a, uh, we, a team will help to, uh, to figure out a plan on that uh, and we'll identify the issues uh, for a priority attention. And uh, with that, I'm going to uh, tag team off here to, uh, to Glenn. Okay, as I jump into the ring. Okay, um, the second group would work on the GFS uh, and the long-term structure. This would be evaluate the current GFS, identify weaknesses in it, recommend which weaknesses are more important, which should be addressed, evaluate experimental tests of these specific changes, and recommend whether these changes are ready to be put into a parallel test of a new system. Um, it would assess the retrospect and real-time parallel GFS tests, and it would evaluate, notice seven is going back to one, evaluate the newer GFS, identify weaknesses, recommend which, and so on. So this would be an ongoing process over several years. Um, a third group, um, is, would work with communication and dissemination. Okay, with the GFS implementation, we had a, the last one, we had an official parallel for field assessment roughly a month or maybe a month and a half immediately before implementation. And it was, it was certainly not the ideal form. What we would like to move to is a much longer field assessment of the proposed changes to forecast systems much earlier in the implementation process. Uh, so there will be much greater field input on forecast system performance of the operational models as well as the experimental. And as part of this group, would, a task of this group would be to consider an interactive platform which anyone could plot statistical skill of forecast systems, even synoptic professors in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, so the task would be to determine how to increase the access of the rest of the National Weather Service to test the proposed changes to the Weather Service production suite. Recommend viewing platforms to improve collaboration between EMC and set centers and regional and local offices. And explore and recommend ways to unify diagnostic and verification statistics and improve public access. Okay, there's been some good recent platforms for looking at them. The Western region did a great job for the GFS implementation with the defraud DT. I think they essentially store the NCO daily files they put out on the official parallels. The global and mesoscale brands uh, have pages for operational parallel runs. So this one is Fang Lin Yang's page that shows maps, daily maps of now of the new GFS we're hoping to implement in December. And there's also a similar page for the mesoscale branch. And we have a team at just no disk space uh, um, that we can use for displaying more fields in the future. And this group would decide how best to use that. And there's several new platforms. <coughs> uh, there's NIGHT, uh, NWP Information Technology Environment from DTC. VLAB is out there, although the thoughts I had is, I've heard, it seems to be, it's be more of a discussion rather than display in all the various fields. And that's certainly being encouraged by Weather Service Management. And EMC is beginning to work on using MetViewer, developed again by DTC. Uh, and I think Perry uh, Sefren will give a talk next two weeks from now in Chicago on this. Okay, uh, and the fourth element here, we'd like to try a VISTAS program between EMC and the Susan Doe's from the rest of the Weather Service. 
Okay, we would like to bring Susan Bells into MAG and EMC to probably primarily evaluate the operational models and proposed improvements and inform us of what they have seen. Carry out proposed projects. I think some of the some the amount of local modeling that goes, I think you probably have a good deal of talent among the Susan Doe's and running models. Perhaps they want to work on our models with us and actually get into making the sausage. Uh, and uh, what, what these visits would do, hopefully it would move on to collaboration after the visit. And also, we would, you know, hopefully they would give a presentation at MEG while they were here and in future MEG uh, presentations. Second element, which you, uh, we bring to bring EMC developers to the forecast offices, you know, to learn the forecast process, to learn what you actually use. A few years ago, I was surprised to see forecasters in the, and uh, what's now the Weather Prediction Center looking at day eight precip. Uh, better, and this would help us to better understand how the model actually performs and how the forecasters view the model and what the forecasters need and want from us. Okay, so deliverables from all this. Well, improved, more inclusive model evaluation implementation and expanded MEG with greater involvement by the rest of the weather service. Okay. More time to collaboratively assess and become familiar with a greater sample of experimental model output. Increased understanding of model strengths and weaknesses leading to better forecast, human forecast, and better models. Increased EMC understanding of how its model are be actually being used. Improved and easier access EMC verification statistics. And a trials visitor program between EMC and the rest of the weather service. Okay, so this would do this following. Would involve National Weather Service local forecast offices or regional offices, NSEP centers, and EMC in projects to improve models. It would expand the evaluation of models. It would involve SUS, DOES, and others in the early evaluation of new models. And we develop formal contacts in each MSET center, National Weather Center, and the regional headquarters for guidance to EMC and to MAG and to help guide these groups. Okay, and it would create a visitors program to bring in SUS and DOES into MAG and EMC and to bring EMC developers out to the forecast offices. It would work with NCO and headquarters and the rest of the weather service to generate different platforms to display models, parallels, and retrospectives. <coughs> create informal forums for users. And it would also use the SUDO workshop this September here uh, to engage the field in developing and implementing this proposal. So our forecasters would be better informed of the planned model upgrades, have much earlier access to more forecasts from proposed new models, be more directly involved in assessing new models, have much better access to verification statistics, understand the models better. Benefits to the weather service, improved understanding and expectations of the models by the developers and forecast, improved understanding by developers of how the models are actually used, enhanced parallel evaluations to greatly improve implementation, improve users better and earlier, one-stop shopping for model verification, more targeted model development, better models, better public service, and provide a framework for guiding the next generation, the development of the next generation global predicting system and for evaluating it. So really the key question of all this is what do you think? Well, there's plenty of time left for discussion now. There will be a questionnaire, hopefully sent out this afternoon, to Susan Doe's to answer by July 5th. This is a Google uh, poll, and uh, David Merrick will send it out. And hopefully, one purpose is to lead up to the Sue Doe workshop this September. There's one afternoon, and there's going to be a breakout session on what you want from EMC, and then a chance for EMC to reply to what you say there. And these questions, I think, will help formulate the questions for the breakout session. And it would also, of course, provide direct guidance to EMC and to the MEC on how we should proceed on what you think of all this. My email is there. You can email me at any time about anything, practically. Um, if you want to vet and the questionnaires are adequate for that, that's certainly one avenue. Okay, that's our presentation, and we'll open it up 
questions, comments? Any questions, Chris? Yeah, I just, I just have a question regarding the the SOOS and DOS, uh, you know, implementation. I mean, the visitors program. So, are you thinking of inviting them during the parallel implementation phase, or is it throughout the year once something is in operations, and then the visitors come in and evaluate and suggest some of the problems in the model or issues, then that collect all the information and then feed it back to the developers and then they fix things and then we have an implementation space that is, you know, annual nowadays. So are we, I mean, how, how does that work? I, mean, that's I don't think there'll ever be a shortage of things to look at. There's always something that's in parallel. If not, there's something that's in operation that can be looked at. But again, this is there's so many model systems here uh, that they'll never again there'll never be a shortage of parallels that need evaluation or experimental tests that need evaluation. I have no concerns there. We we won't be struggling to fill their time. So what you're saying, though, Jeff, is that there wouldn't be necessarily a window of time for them to target visiting. They, in fact, they that we would take visitors at really almost any time. I think so. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like Christmas would not be a popular time to visit over, obviously. You know, there's a, yeah, but yeah, we were prepared to, I envisioned, you know, like several, like 18 visits a year. As, when the program gets spun up, let's see if we can, if we know what we're doing first with it. But um, yeah, I, they would come in, um, you know, it, I think we would ask that they you know, talk about their interests before, uh, we see, and then we try to arrange a visit, try to arrange talks with them with people, at that type of thing. Okay. Any other comments, questions on that? Jill? I think a, uh, an issue is how much technical know-how are these visitors supposed to have themselves about uh, modeling or running a model, or are we assuming that EMC has the uh, standby personnel, like a help desk almost, to, uh, to help them through all that so that they don't have to feel bad that they don't know how to run a model or they don't know really where to look. Either. They're not expected to come in and say, hey, your convective scheme needs a better closure scheme or your horizontal diffusion is wrong. They're expected to you know, notice that you, know, you uh, this model uh, can't produce elevated MCCs or has its QPF too far north, and then our job is to work with them to figure out you know, what in the model is causing that bias. So we need very really dedicated people on this side. Well, the, the, the idea of the expanded MEG, I think, is to uh, kind of bridge that gap a lot. Yeah. They, would, you know, they would come in with their expertise. Okay, they would come in and say, we use like the VFS for this and this. We like this. We don't like that. And then they would also help us look at the new GFS and say, you know, ah, that that's that's really important, and you're not recognizing it, or you think that's big and it doesn't really matter to us. That's the type of thing they would do. So they would come in with their own expertise. You know, not everyone here. I don't know how to run the model, and I don't know if I feel particularly bad about that. Okay, any other? Okay, uh, comments on the line? Questions? This is, this is Bill Ward, Pacific Region Headquarters. Um, I, I yeah. actually welcome this, and I think this is a, a really good thing that you all are doing. And I think this would probably be particularly good because I'm getting up at like 5 o'clock in the morning just to get on this, and I can't hardly get anyone else to get on here because of the, the, you know, the time of the morning and and lack of ability to, you know, people even being at work at this time. So I certainly welcome this, and I, I hope that there's a way that we can participate more uh, through this. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Um, so how many people are you willing to host in Hawaii? <laughs> Jeff, you're welcome anytime you want to come out. That goes for either one of the Jeffs, I suspect. <laughs> sure, absolutely. 
I have to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about the time. The only thing I would say is WPC has been pushing to have us have it earlier. So. Yeah. What the, our you know our weekly meetings uh, with the 11:30 Eastern time aren't ideal for everyone, but. We have started re putting the presentations online, we recordings online. So, uh, for those that can't dial in, you know, our, our material is out there. Any other? Okay. Other comments, questions? Yeah, this is Mike Evans. Um, I'm a Sioux in Binghamton, New York, and I think this is a great idea. And I'm just kind of wondering, in the meantime, before this gets all spun up and everything, if out in the field we're seeing uh, funny things going on, like what you showed out in Iowa last year or a couple years ago. Uh, what's the best way to get that kind of information to you guys now? Uh, well, there's essentially two paths. One is Jeff DeMago. I think that's a traditional path. You can email Jeff DeMago, or you can email me or Jeffrey Manikin. Yeah, I think I think uh, with the you know, with the Meg now, you know, our our goal is to you know respond to these things, and you know, we we we've, we've been a little bit hesitant to to broadcast far and wide that we're the people to to contact, uh, just because it's three of us trying to you know watch everything in addition to our other tasks here. But uh, you know, people in the field have started coming to us, and and our our three emails, uh, mine, uh, Glenn, and Corey's, are on the. Uh, first page of this uh, uh, talk, and uh, if, if you see issues, uh, we're, we're definitely good candidates here for, uh, for contact on that, and we'll, uh, we'll look at them as best we can. Yeah, there, there is, you know, in our experience with the RTMA, we had a list server so that uh, when, when somebody posted to that, everybody that, was, that had subscribed to the list server would see it. And, every t and when we would post a response, everybody would see it. That worked out very well. Uh, we have set, since set up listservs for the NAM, the SREF, uh, and I think the high res window. We haven't advertised those, which is my fault. Uh, but those, that's an alternative mechanism that, you can, uh, that we hope will uh, entice people to become inter uh, interactive with us, as well as these email connections to the MEG. Yeah, I should set up, set up a similar thing for the GFS and run for back. Hey, Jeff or uh, Glenn, uh, this is Steve Zubrick, Sue at Sterling. Uh, last week, the in preparation for the National Sudo meeting, we had a talk by Steve Smith on the uh, the V Lab. Uh, are there any thoughts to to using that uh, mechanism as a vehicle to? Get people involved, you know, with some of this work. Um, there has been some thoughts. You know, I have not pursued them. That's my fault. Uh, but I mean, Jack Selmy of Southern Region has suggested that, and we should we should pursue that. Yeah, it might be something you might want to pursue. It seems like it's yeah. gaining a little bit of traction. Uh, I have a second follow-up question. Um, uh, some, there's, there's some models, you know, like the uh, Fireweather Nest uh, that we occasionally look at, you know, if it's a run that's in our area. Um, will, will the MEG be involved in, uh, in looking at the output with that, and do you want Sue's involved with that as well? Yes, I mean, we, we, we do look at the Fireweather Nest, but again, this, this goes to the uh, point that the uh, we're 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 begging for a mega expansion here because again three three people doing this part time just can't look at everything. And yeah, I uh, agree. There's just so much every day that occurs all across the CONUS, and it just and the globe. <laughs> yeah, and it's not looked at. And I, I want to make one uh, two overarching comments. Uh, one, when I was acting deputy director at WPC. Uh, I, and I don't know if there's any WPC members in the audience there, but I thought that it might be a good idea to involve, uh, you know, the EMC MEG folks with the WPC forecasters and to do some type of uh, almost, uh, you know, you do this day uh, weekly on Thursdays, but it was almost like 
they could do some type of brief 15-minute overview of, of an event that occurred in the CONUS that uh, would be uh, handled, you know, by, say, a WPC forecaster, maybe, maybe with an EMC guy, too, to talk about how the models performed for, you know, a significant event across the, the CONUS. And it could be on a, uh, you know, kind of a as-needed basis. You know, sometimes in the wintertime nothing really happens day in, day out. But, you know, we've certainly had a lot of events, uh, you know, this, this year uh, where the models uh, have, have kind of given us a, a, a kind of a spread of solutions, which they always do. And, and, and the analysis, Jeff Manikin, that you've done, you know, for some of the uh, past systems, you know, like the heavy rain down in Texas that caused the catastrophic flooding in the Houston area, that stuff is just great. Uh, I think, you know, we, we like to see more of that. Uh, so, so that arching, overarching comment is, you know, maybe some involvement in WPC would be good. The other comment, and I'll try to be, make this brief, is that in the Weather Service, we're really focused on high-impact weather, and a lot of that high-impact weather is occurring uh, under, you know, two hours in, in, from right now. And I, I just think that we need to sharpen our focus on that time period from now until two hours. Uh, I think it's great that the GFS alerts us to things, you know, five days out. But, you know, tactically, when we're briefing our core users, emergency managers, we, we really need better guidance that tells us what is this system going to do in the next, you know, two, three hours, or what's going to develop in the next two to three hours and have you know, and have some confidence that, that it's on the right track. That is a little bit of a holy grail, but uh, I think we need to sharpen our focus and give some attention to that, and maybe this is a form to do that. That's it. Thanks. Steve, this is Jeff Domago. We, we, you know, one of the reasons we put the convection allowing scale ensemble on our list for a team is that, you know, we definitely are moving in that direction so that our sh and, and part of that, the mission for that ensemble will be the shorter ranges. Uh, and, and we, you know, we all know that's going to be a major challenge. So, um, yep. it, it'll, be re it'll be receiving attention, whether it's, it's as much as everybody wants it to be. Uh, you know, that depends on how much um, expansion we can actually manage with this, pro with this group. And Steve, we have had some discussions with WPC about uh, doing a little bit of like a, a Meg highlight reel at a uh, WPC map discussion on Friday or Monday, something like that. Okay, good. Glad to hear that. Okay, other comments, questions online? Walter, did you want to say something? This is Walter Kolchinsky at EMC. I think the MEG has done a pretty good job looking at CONUS events that are as they happen, you know, because it's easy, it's fresh in everybody's mind. But what we, I think we need to do, and, you know, manpower issues, obviously, and hopefully the SUS can help with this, is we really need, especially, it's especially important with the parallel, we need to look at the retrospective runs. Because with the parallel, you know, you only have a couple months of it, so you're not getting all the seasons. So we need... We need somebody with forecasting experience to be able to look at the retrospective. We need to be able to make the retrospectives available to the forecasters. We need somebody to actually look at them so they can go back and look at past, you know, other seasons and not just, you know, Sandy, not just, you know, the really high impact events, but look at several ordinary day forecasts and see, you know, in seasons that aren't current, how is the parallel doing? Because you know, you don't want to go to the parallel and you put in operations and then yes, then you discover problems because oh, you can look at when it was live. Helping us evaluate retrospective runs is definitely part of the uh, visitors program uh, uh, proposal. You're 100% correct. Yeah. And in a similar vein, I think the, uh, you know, following up on, on cases that were, you know, egregious, uh, you know, we obviously will be attempting to do reruns and, and address the, the shortcomings, but it would be good to, you know, have that reported back, um, you know, when we, when we get a good result or, or something. And it's part of that retrospective where you can spend a lot of time looking at it 
without having to keep up with the real time. Following up on that, um, this is Brad Ferrier on Jeff's comment and Walter's comment. Uh, there's going to be also some times with some cases where we have to make difficult choices. Uh, we're right now currently looking at the May 6 case. You and Corey identified with high QPF over um, the Appalachians and and the squirrely soundings, the saturated soundings. And to address some of those requires calling the physics more frequently, some aspects of the physics, and we're even seeing these in three kilometer reruns. So I think, you know, how do we navigate that? No, I, I, it's as much, maybe it's it's been an historically done with an EMC, but I think forecasters may need to, should be aware of some of the approximations that we make and the forecast impacts of those of those changes and those shortcuts. Great, thank you, Brian. Yeah, that's certainly you know we want the forecasters to understand the models better, and it, I think um, and we want it's certainly the retrospectives and getting the field more involved in the evaluation of where we want to go. Come up where you can hear you, please. two-and-a-half-day meeting we had um, for uh, winter weather um, training development. Uh, a lot of the folks from WDTV were in our building as well as uh, several SUs throughout the weather service. And um, one of the things in our group we talked about was uh, improving training for forecasters to actually understand what goes into the model. So I think that'll an that kind of answers some of like Hume's questions and so people now understand Forecasters need to be more aware of um, everything from how probabilities work in ensembles to convective schemes, microphysics schemes, how, how models are initialized. Uh, all this stuff um, will be built in. So, um, so at least from a winter weather perspective, a lot of uh, these elements will be addressed in terms of training development over the next couple of years. So you almost need some sort of a desk where people get the training right. or test beds where they can. Again, this this the Meg meetings provide a forum for some of that information. And again, the whole idea of the visitors program is you know people can come here and learn about what we're doing, how how we make decisions on what goes into the model, and help in those decisions, and just learn about exactly you know what we're doing. May, may I just suggest one of the things that uh, might be useful because Comet is the program that mm -hmm. explains uh, most of the modules that they produce on physical parameterization, data assimilation. So mm -hmm. one, one of my suggestions is in the PowerPoint, when you have large discrepancies that you may attribute to a convection, then probably uh, give provide a link to that comment if that module is available so that people can really see where to look for and then get a sense of uh, what's going on in the model and what what are the enhancements those kind of things are useful because oftentimes people don't know these things are available but where to look is a big problem we need to have a metadata of all the all the stuff that we want to look for that's that's another yeah, it's um, yeah. We I think it's not just our verification that needs to be improved. Our access to verification on the web is access to model information. Some of that is out there, and but you need someone who looks after it and updates it. I sent and said I sent links to people, and they came back and said, "Well, I went further down, and this link led to a restricted site or to nothing." I said, "Oh." And then you, you have to go back to the person who wrote it, and he's busy or he's retired. We need to get our web better organized. That's a good idea. Any more comments on the line? Uh, I have one. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm wondering, now that this proposal has been put out there, uh, what would be the next steps towards getting it implemented? 
Um, okay, we're, the next step will be to make this available to all Susan Doe's the, um, presentation and the recording and send out the, the questionnaire we have for the Susan Doe's. And as we have in Obai, I think July 5th, we want the replies and we'll tabulate them and discuss them and help organize the Sue Doe workshop. And at the same time, I think EMC will, if there is interest in these groups, I think EMC will start to organize them. We're, we're, we're working with management to get them fully on board. Our, our initial meetings have been very encouraging, uh, and we, we believe this will all go forward. I think the finalizing it at the pseudo meeting is, is the idea. Yeah. Hopefully we can get started on some of this before then. You mean EMC management, or does this need to go to a higher level of management? It's, it, it's, it's gone higher than that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> Have the questionnaires been sent out already? Uh, no, it's, no, it's ready to go. Okay. Yeah. It will. It will be sent to Susan Dolls. Do you want to give more time, given the fact that there's the WAF NWP conference in between? We've thought about that, but you know, we we want to. The workshop is in September. And we want to give the feedback to EMC management and start to think about it. So July 5th, if someone really, if July 5th you're too busy to fill it out the way you want to, you can email me and say, give me some more time. As long as there's a reasonable amount, I'll consider it. Okay. Okay, any comments in the room? More questions, comments? Yeah. This is Jacob Carly, EMC. So I saw that there was a point in there. So there's one, there's sort of two parts. One was have folks in the field come to EMC, work with us here. But there was also a part about EMC folks going out into the field. That's what I just have a little bit, a little bit of a question about since we seem to be discussing number one. But item two seems really interesting. Um, could have a really good, potentially really good experience as a model developer, data person going out to the field and sitting down with a forecaster and, and whatnot. So is there more information on that aspect that perhaps we can discuss, or maybe that's a conversation we have to have with the Susan Doe's at the workshop? I, I think that's uh, mostly for the workshop, but you're right, Jacob. I, I think it's, it's going to be a great opportunity to, uh, to, I, to, to get us out there to, to see what's going on, and again, just to just open communication for lack of, uh, or for, but without being uh, too uh, corny on that. I mean, that's that's the goal here. Is we we need to get out there and see how people. You know, I think a lot of us in this room have been to you know SPC or uh, AWC or WPC, and we we every time we go, we learn what they're how they're looking at our models, what they're looking at, and I know I think uh, you know we always learn something when we go, and we need to you know do that. I think at the WFO level. Right. I mean, at the moment, it's it's sort of a at the concept level. Everybody agrees it's a good idea, but you know, the devil's in the details. How do we work it out? How do you determine um, what offices are available for visits? Um, how long? How long, that sort of thing. And, and then you have to decide you know, which of your developers have the flexibility to participate. Um, you know, I for one have 17 cats I have to take care of, so I'm not sure I can <laughs> take them with you. <laughs> Road trip. Uh, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brian Morotsky from Eastern Region. Are you going to be sending this survey and including the regions in, in this as well? Uh, David Merrick will be sending it out, and he has sent like the invitation to the regional uh, SD chiefs, and I think he plans to do the same with the question now. Uh, so it will, it will go through the regions, region, uh, the regional headquarters to the office, to the Sues and those. Hey, Glenn, it's Dave Myrick. I've got the yeah. email all teed up and ready to go, and we'll send it as soon as the call is over. Okay. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Um, concerning how we get this going, my thought has been 
I, and this is my idea, um, but my idea has been to email the regional headquarters, the science and technology chiefs there, and, to re and, the, center, and the NSEP center directors and say, we have these four projects in mind. We have, three pro we have three groups in mind. Which group do you want to have someone participate in, and who do you want to participate? And then for, this, and then for the visits, we'll say, um, we need your help in determining who would like to visit, what their interests are, and which of your regional offices or local offices or NSEP centers you would like to see EMC people at, and why do you want to see them? Great. That would go. Glenn. That is, I would like to, I'm not sure, it's Jeff DeMago on half So that they want us there so they can poke holes in us. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we should send Jeff DeMago. No, just kidding. No, I, I mean, there, I'm certainly, you know, there's going to be some fights over this. That's healthy. But, I mean, yeah. And I, I think, you know, a lot of us can poke back, too. Okay, any other comments? Hey, Jeff and Glenn. This is uh, Brett McDonald out at Riverton, Wyoming office. Um, I've been, I see, years ago I was at HPC, and then I came out mm -hmm. to a field office. And from that time, I have been, well, not too terribly vocal, but a bit vocal on trying to get parallel experimental evaluation versions, whatever you want, into the hands of the forecasters in an easier process. Mm -hmm. And rather than just uh, images on a website that they can go visit, but actually in the system that they usually look at the models. And, it's, and, and nothing has ever been done over the last 12 plus years to get that into baseline. It's always been back of the door. You know, we grab the grib files off of the FTP server by region. Region sends them out via LDM. We have to hack around in the existing software in order to get that parallel version in. And then, as, even as Glenn mentioned before, those parallels are only up there for a month. And, and that, that's what we're looking at. Um, we made some improvements when, uh, with the whole RTMA, URMA, and, but it was still backdoor, relying on region to grab the files and send them out through LDM. I really think that if, if we can increase, it, in order to increase that collaboration between the field offices and EMC, we need to get that evaluation process into baseline. Get it set up that way. And I don't know where we push or how it goes, but to me, it make it it'll make a huge difference. Brett, Brett uh, we, we we agree at, uh, that that kind of effort is a little bit uh, above uh, our level, but uh, you know anything we can do to promote it, uh, uh, we will. Ultimately, like getting this stuff into AWIPS, I think is is a nightmarish challenge, uh, and I'm not sure what the right platform is then. Yeah, we do have a group. One of the four four areas we talked about was this dissemination, and uh, I think certainly your. Your input to that group or participation in the group would seem to, it would be encouraged by me. Yeah, this, this is why we're trying to sell it to, uh, and we want buy-in from upper management, is because EMC can't make the changes and can't force something into the AWIPS baseline. Uh, but if we get buy-in from uh, NCO, we get buy-in from IDP, uh, we get buy-in from, uh, you know, a couple of the portfolios, then um, then it's much, much more likely to happen. Now, and, and there are alternatives that have been discussed, and I'm not an expert, but I know they're, they're talking about a reach-back capability to something like a nomad so that everything doesn't get disseminated through, say, the satellite broadcast, but everything is still available, and it, you aren't forced to just look at a website, I don't know what, when that's going to be stood up. It's sort of stood up now. It's a lot like having to do an FTP to bring the things in. So it's, it definitely needs to be refined so that it's user 
it's much more user friendly and, and transparent to the forecaster. But I, I think it's it, this will go a long way to to uh, and the success of this program will will hinge on success in getting communications uh, a whole lot better for our parallels and test data. Uh, uh, Brent, uh, this is John Ice at Central Region Headquarters. Um, you can uh, chat with myself or we can get together with especially Matt Foster here and we can talk about uh, baselining and what's all required to do that. We might be able to be helpful in that regard. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, comments and uh, questions in the, uh, in the room? Okay, any more comments on the line? Hey, Glenn, this is Dave Myrick in Silver Spring. I just wanted to thank all of you guys for putting on this special call today, and I encourage all the Sues and Does on the line to you know complete the questionnaire when it goes out. Okay, and I'd like to thank all the comments. I've heard some very good comments here, very thoughtful comments, and we appreciate it. And, and Dave, thank you for your efforts yeah. with all this. Yeah. Okay. And thank you to everyone for calling in today. Okay. We, we appreciate it.